This is the mod to KS. Lots of fun fare around it. I have mixed feelings. Mods, I sent this for review. As always, all opinions my own. But the KS, uh, let's start with my first impressions. It sounds like a maraca. It's still fully functional. I'm not going to send it back, but it shows some issues with quality control. The KS's mod says entry level formula or GT style wheel. It costs $279 plus tax or around 279 pounds, depending where you buy it, time of year and all of that. The price is really competitive, it's basically at the price of Fanatec's McLaren wheel with the QR run quick release, but it comes with far more features and honestly a much better quick release which is Motsus. It's also considerably less than Motsus GS and FSR wheel and it's compatible with all of their wheelbases and with the hub it's compatible with plenty more. The KS has an impressive spec sheet for this price. It's a 300 millimeter wheel, so bigger than formula, but still usable, but it's so perfect in terms of size for GT racing. It has 10 retro illuminated buttons, two four-way D-pads with a click, two handle mounted thumb rotaries, 312 position rotaries, magnetic shifters, clutches, and the rev light. It's built out of a carbon reinforced composite, and if you get the universal hub, you can connect it to everything via the quick release adapter and it will work. What's not to like with this spec sheet and price? Well, a few things. Some of them I'm willing to ignore because of the awesome price. Others are quite a nuisance, but generally I think it's an interesting wheel with lots of value. The looks might not convince everyone, the GS is certainly, at least for me, a better looking wheel, though this does bear some resemblance to the Ferrari 488 GT3 wheel. It's a Ferrari! It's, a it's actually pretty okay to me. Structurally, the KS is really solid, there's no creaks, it weighs 1225 grams with the quick release. Pretty much every single wheel base should be okay with this one. I'm not too sure about the R5, but the R5 might be good, and I say might. It should have enough torque to give you all the sensations and force feedback you need. Retro illuminated buttons come bare or naked, but you can cover them up because they provide in a box a sheet of stickers so you can customize the wheel as you want. The 10 retro illuminated buttons are of a new style. They have this firm press with a quick release and short stroke finishing in a great clicky sound. Honestly, I find these buttons much better than a longer throw from the GS or FSR wheel and they sound so much better. The clickiness of the rest of the buttons is okay. The rotary dials, I think they are pretty good. It, they work as they should. They have a positive click into position. But the shifters though, I find them tremendously disappointing even though they're magnetic. And the shifters are definitely quieter than most, so Spouses will agree with this. However, even though they are magnetic, it doesn't really have a positive click feedback from the movement. It is super smooth and it's too smooth for a shifter. So you don't have a, a proper feedback when the engagement is there where you are gonna actually shift. This is where the KS wheel starts to become a little bit of hit and miss, but does it stop me to use it? No. But this could be so much better. Anyways, having it in the hand is pretty nice even without the gloves, though the ergonomics are a constant inconvenience that needs to be worked around. If you grab the wheel, it's comfortable and the wheel's functionality is spot on. It does have all the controls you need for all the car systems, there are no shortage of buttons. The wheel is comfortable, the grips I think they're fine and they have been comfortable for extended periods of time. But certain parts of the ergonomics are really strange and they have been my pet peeve with them. First of all, the thumb well is way too small, requiring a bit of grip shifting to allow the thumb to move out. The GT does not have any problems with that. The D-pad positioning couldn't be more annoying. Because of where it sits, the thumb has to jiggle over it to access the middle and lower buttons. In the GS, this wasn't an issue because there's this cutout that allows you naturally to move over the D-pads to access this button or this button. The ease of access to buttons, especially the ones next to your hands, are for me of critical importance because you really don't want to mess around with anything. You don't want to move your hand grip in any way. You just want to touch the button and that's it. And this is what makes me frustrated about the KS wheel is that you have such a good example here of ergonomics at work 
they're not perfect, but they're really, really good. And I gave so many high marks to this wheel last year. And then Motza does something like that, that feels like it could have been done better with little to no effort. Then after the ergonomics, there's another issue, a big one for me, and they are the paddle shifters. First of all, this sits really close to your hands. The paddle shifters aren't really sitting in a place you would expect. And depending on the size of your hands and the way you grip the wheel, it can interfere with your regular grip of the wheel. The retro illuminated buttons are customizable, but to activate them, it's not through pit house, but rather by moving both the pads inwards. It would be amazing if we could do the same thing through pit house because you can address the way how the rev limiter works through the pit house as well. Speaking of rev lights, the rev light design they chose, it's an older type of rev light with individual LEDs instead of this uh, old uh, Knight Rider kind of stuff, which honestly, I kind of prefer, but I understand why some people don't like it. It does feel a little bit too futuristic, but speaking of that, uh, I think they have done a good choice by moving to an older type of design with individual LEDs. The KS is really a strange wheel for me. It really shows potential. It shows that there's great specs inside. And some of the choices they have done for the KS could be transferred to the other wheels as well for the GS or the FSR. You know, the buttons are clearly superior, at least in my opinion, are clearly superior than to the GSs or the FSRs. But at the same time, it can become quite frustrating to use when you use other wheels all the time and they do the ergonomics in small ways so much better. The loose parts inside certainly has tainted my reception to the wheel, at least from the beginning, but I've done my best to go around it and just think about what this wheel offers. And for me, the main thing, even without the frustrating parts of the ergonomics, is that this wheel definitely offers a lot of value. And because it offers so much at such a lower price, it can even sway people from buying the GS or an FSR. And I, I can see exactly why. 279 pounds for this, it's actually pretty good. I would like to say thank you to all the members of the channel for supporting it. If you want to become a member yourself and support the channel, please do so. And also, why don't you check out this video of the Mozza R12? Because I think the R12 and the KS wheel actually pair very well.